All right, we're in chapter seven of C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. Welcome back as we continue the story about a um, bus ride from hell to heaven where those that ride it up from hell to heaven get the choice of staying or going back to hell. Chapter seven. Although I watched the misfortunes of the ghost and the buller with some complacency, I found when we were left alone that I could not bear the presence of the water giant. It did not appear to take any notice of me but I became self-conscious, and I, and I, rather than think there there was some assumed nonchalance in my movements as I walked away over the flat rocks downstream again, I was beginning to be tired. Looking at the silverfish which darted over the riverbed, I wished greatly that, to me, also that water were permeable. I should have liked a dip. Thinking of going back, said a voice close at hand. I turned and saw a tall ghost standing with its back against a tree, chewing a ghostly cheroot. It was that of a lean, hard-bitten man with gray hair and gruff, but not uneducated voice, the kind of man I have always instinctively felt to be reliable. I don't know, said I. Are you? Yes, I guess I've seen about all there is to see. You don't think of staying. That's all propaganda, it said. Of course there's never was any question of staying. You can't eat the fruit, and you can't drink the water, and it takes you all your time to walk on the grass. A human being cannot live here. All that idea of staying is only an advertisement stunt. Then why did you come? Oh, I don't know. Just to have a look around. I'm the sort of chap who likes to see things for himself. Wherever I've been, I've always had a look at it, anything that was being cracked up. When I was out east, I went to see Pekin. When, what was Pekin like? Nothing to it, just one darn wall inside another. Just a trap for tourists. I've been pretty well everywhere. Niagara Falls, uh, the pyramids, Salt Lake City, the Taj Mahal. What was it like? Not worth looking at. And they're all advertising stunts. All run by the same people. There's a combine, you know. A world combine. That just takes an atlas and decides where they'll have a site. It doesn't matter what they choose, anything will do as long as the publicity's properly managed. And you've lived her down there in the town for some time? In what they call hell, yes. It's a flop, too. And they lead you to expect red fire and devils and all sorts of interesting people sizzling on grids. Henry VIII and all that, but when you get there, it's it's just like any other town. I prefer it up here, said I. Well, I don't see what's all the talks about, said the hard-bitten ghost. It's as good as any other park to look at and darned uncomfortable. There's some. There seems to be some idea that if one stays here, one would get, well, solider, grow a acclimatized. I don't know about that, said the ghost. Same old lie. People have been telling me that sort of thing all my life. They told me in the nursery that if I were good, I'd be happy. And they told me at school that Latin would get easier as I went on. After I'd been married a month, some fool was telling me that there were always difficulties at first but the tact and patience I'd soon settle down and like it. And all through two wars, what didn't they say about the good time coming? If only I'd be a brave boy and go on being shot at. Of course they'll play the old game here of anyone's fool enough to listen. But who are they? This must be run by someone different. Entirely new management, eh? Don't you believe it? 
It's never new management. You'll always find the same old ring. I know about all about dear kind mummy coming up to your bedroom and getting all she wants to know out of you. But you always found she and father were the same firm, really. Didn't we find that both sides of the wars were running by the same armament firms? Or the same firm which is behind the Jews and the Vatican and the dictators and the democracies, all the rest of it. All this stuff up here is run by the same people as the town. They're just laughing at us. I thought they were at war. Of course you did. That's the official version, but who's ever seen any signs of it? Oh, I know, that's how they talk. But if there's a real war, why don't they do anything? Don't you see that if the official version were true, those chaps up there would attack and sweep the town out of existence? And they've got the strength. If they want to rescue us, they could do it. But obviously, the last thing they want is to end this so-called war. The whole game depends on keeping it going. This account of the matter struck me as uncomfortably plausible. I said nothing. Anyway, said the ghost, who wants to be rescued? What would there be to do here? Or there, said I. Quite, said the ghost. And they've got you either way. Uh, what I would, what would you like to do if you had your choice, I asked. There you go, said the ghost with a certain triumph, asking me to make a plan. It's up to the management to find something that doesn't bore us, isn't it? It's their job. Why should we do it for them? That's just where all the parsons and moralists have got this thing upside down. They keep asking us to alter ourselves. But if the people who run the show are so clever and so powerful, why don't they find something to suit their public? And all this poppycock about growing harder so that the grass doesn't hurt our feet now. <laughs> There's an example. What would you say if you went to the hotel where the eggs were all bad, and when you complained to the boss, instead of apologizing and changing his dairyman, he just told you that if you tried, you'd get to like bad eggs in time? Well, I'll be getting along, said the ghost after a short silence. You coming my way? There doesn't seem to be much point in going anywhere on your showing, I replied. A great depression had come over me. And at least it's not raining here. Not at the moment, said the hard-bitten ghost. But I never saw on those bright mornings that didn't come to rain later on. And don't be gum. When it does rain here, ah, you hadn't thought of that. It hadn't occurred to you that with that sort of water they have here, every raindrop will make a hole in you. Like a machine gun bullet. That's their little joke, you see. First of all, tantalize you with the ground you can walk on, can't walk on, and the water you can't drink, and then drill you full of holes. But they won't catch me that way. A few minutes later, he moved on, and that's the end of chapter seven.